Wednesday evening service, our midweek service online. Good to have each and every one of you tonight. The Lord bless you richly. A lot of things happening at Calvary as I welcome you. Uh, first of all, I pray that you uh, make sure you have your Bibles available and your kid kiddos there in the room with you. Uh, but a few announcements, and I think you're going to like these things. Uh, the kids' church and uh, the junior high, senior high youth, uh, beginning August the 2nd, that is a Sunday, uh, they're going to be hosting the Sunday Zoom calls uh, from the church. And so they'll be Zooming and teaching the, the, uh, the junior high, senior high from the barn, uh, for example. Uh, but they're going to be Zooming so your kids can tune in. And same thing with the kids' church beginning again Sunday, August the 2nd. It's only going to happen, though, during the second service. So it says here to receive the Zoom link for the kids' church, please email Danielle at Danielle at Love Never Fails at Com. Now, on the youth, it says if you haven't signed up uh, already to be on the youth emails list for um, the updates, you can email Pastor Raul or Pastor Kendall uh, at Epic or Hiding Place, and that would be Epic at uh, LoveNeverFails.com or Hiding Place at LoveNeverFails.com, and they will email you the Zoom link. So on Sunday, you can just, they're going to be in the barn, they're going to be teaching, and you can be part of the services as well uh, during this pandemic. Uh, also, it says uh, for the kids' church, children two years to fifth grade who attend the second service uh, with their parents, uh, and if the parents feel comfortable and you would like your kids to attend the Zoom meeting that will be going on in the kids' church, uh, then you can join Danielle uh, in the first and second class uh, uh, class first and second grade classroom, uh, but uh, mask for the kids' church, well, they, they don't have to wear any mask, okay? Uh, also, but you'll drop off your kids in the cafe and pick them up in the cafe as well. So it says here for the youth who attend the second service with their parents, uh, if their parents want them to go back, uh, they will be practicing social distancing with the junior high, senior high. They'll also be wearing masks. So that begins again, uh, August the 2nd, that is our Sunday service, only during the second service. You can go online to find all this information out. You can call the church. Also, Haltram Christian School, man, we are gearing up for another, uh, the new school year, and it says in light of the, uh, the COVID virus, we know this is a challenging time uh, for parents as they decide how they're going to educate their children this year. Uh, it says, uh, Heather says, we're so blessed to announce that Haltram Christian School is able to continue on-campus instruction. In other words, uh, we're going to be here. Uh, for our first day of school uh, is August the 17th. Now, it says if on-campus learning isn't an option for your family, Haltom Christian School is launching a new program for homeschooling families. Uh, this program includes weekly lesson packets, virtual instruction, and access on, ha on the uh, campus events. It says for more information, you can visit uh, HaltomChristianSchool.com or email the office here at office at HaltomChristianSchool.com. One more announcement, a very important. First of all, I want to thank everyone. You guys have been so great on our two Sunday services about checking yourself in at the door, getting your temperature taken, and putting on the mask and keeping them on. But I, I, I've sensed now, especially this Sunday, last Sunday, we, we're kind of letting down our guard. And it's, I understand. It, we're sitting, you're listening to the sermon, and you just, maybe you're pulling your mask down. It's around your neck, not around your mouth and nose. That can't happen. So if you do that, the, the usher will spot you. We say this with love and very tender now. Um, you have to keep the mask on. Uh, for the sake of your brothers and your sisters, okay? And if you pull the mask down and and it's while you're listening to me teach, the ushers will ask you to put it on. If you don't, then you'll be asked to leave the service. Uh, and that again, we love you, but that is for the protection of all the people. So uh, I know that you... I know that you'll do that, so thank you for doing that. With all that being said, we're going to be starting out tonight in Psalm 35, 36, and 37. Let's go to the Lord in prayer.
Father, we thank you for this midweek service. We thank you for this Wednesday evening, Lord. And we know that all that is happening in our land, in our world, Lord, it's not out of control like we think. It's in control. It's falling into place, Lord, because you're the God of all creation. You control all of it, Lord, and we look to you tonight. I ask that you help me to teach your word faithfully, accurately. Lord, help me because this, the, it's so important your word to your people tonight, especially from these three psalms that we're going to cover. And Lord, I know that you're helping us. I know that one day there'll be a vaccine. I know, Father, as I pray over your people, those that tonight are, maybe they are so stressed out. Those are the ones I'm praying for right now. Those that may be so stressed, so they're fretting in their hearts, Lord. May your word tonight penetrate the area of their greatest need. We ask that and we believe it now in Jesus' name. And we all say amen. Turn your Bibles tonight to Psalm 35. And I'm going to talk to you tonight two important words. Fret not. The, the very important word tonight. You know, the wicked one, he really wants us to believe that we are living in times of complete uncertainty. Uh, in other words, we can't be certain about anything. He wants to magnify or he wants our fears, our despair, if we have them, to be magnified and to be multiplied and be completely out of control. Since March 13th, we have been experiencing uh, this horrible pandemic. And in the midst of it, uh, this uh, fretting that's going on, listen, I know right now, mothers and fathers, oh, the, the Satan, if he ever wants you to fret, it's right now. You're trying to decide, do I send my kiddos to rem keep them home or do I send them into the classroom? Listen, that's a tough decision. God wants to help you, but as he does help you, he doesn't want you to stress out, okay? He doesn't want you to fret. And, and you know, the devil wants you to get all of your updates from CNN or whatever, Fox News, instead of updating your heart and your mind on the precious promises of God, the God who never lies, amen? And not only that, loved one, listen, he wants every believer to just fret and fret and more on that later as we close out when we get into Psalm 37. But right now, let's look at this Psalm of David, Psalm 35. Not sure when it's written, probably during the time of the, uh, of course, King Saul pursuing him, hunting him down. But let's begin tonight. Psalm 35, verse 1, David pins this. He says, plead my cause, O Lord. In other words, Contend for me, or contend with my contender, uh, contenders, Lord. I'm innocent. I've done no wrong. So he, he's pleading. He says, plead my cause, O Lord, especially with those who strive with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of a shield and a buckler. In other words, those weapons, Father. He says, and stand up for my help. And also draw out the spear. Take, take the spear out of the sheath, if you will, Lord, of the sword. And stop those who pursue me and say to my soul, I am your salvation. And thank God there is no other. What wisdom, the prayer of David. What does he do? He says, Lord, I, I, I turn it all over to you. I'm not going to fight this battle because the battle is the Lord's. I, I, I'm not going to avenge myself. And that's exactly what we need to learn as well. You remember the, uh, Paul writing to the church at Rome. He says in Romans 12, 19, he says, Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Now drop down to verse uh, 27 with me. David says, he says, oh, let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. In other words, David is praying for those who are on David's side that David is going to be vindicated by the Lord. And he says, oh, and let them, and may we put our, our, ourselves here, let them say continually and let Calvary Chapel say continually, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. Amen, David. I agree. So David, by faith, 
He, he believes with all of his heart, number one, that God's going to answer his prayer, and number two, that he's going to be vindicated by the Lord. And so with all that being said tonight, no matter what we're facing, just like David, we take it to the Lord in prayer. We don't have to fret about anything. Now go to Psalm 36. It says to the chief musician, a Psalm of David, and I love this part, the servant of the Lord. Verse 1, an oracle within my heart concerning the transgression of the wicked. There is no fear of God before his eyes. The, the term or the word uh, oracle was, was used by the Old Testament prophets. It just literally means a word from God. So David, he, he receives a divine revelation from God concerning the, the sinfulness of wicked people. And, the, and that he's going to talk to us about his, their lifestyle. He says they have no dread before the Lord. They're not afraid of God. They live like God doesn't even exist. There's no terror. They, they're not worried about the judgment of the Lord or any of those things. The Bible teaches us in Proverbs 1, 7, it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. You know, a person that does not fear God will literally or can literally do anything, loved one. Look at verse 2. Look what the wicked do. For he flatters himself in his own eyes. And when he finds out his iniquity and when he hates, he says the words of his mouth are wickedness and deceit. He has ceased, or we could say he has, he's no longer wise. He no longer does any good. Those who live as if God doesn't exist, it says that they flatter themselves. In other words, they become, in a sense, uh, the center, the center of their own little world, their own little deceived world. The moral compass is completely gone. They're, un they're unable to hate sin. They're unable to speak truth. They're completely unable to do good. And there's a progression here. Note it. It says he flatters, he ceases, and then in verse 4, he devises plots or he sets himself or commits himself to a wicked course. So it says he devises wickedness on his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not abhor or literally, he doesn't hate or loathe evil. That's a tragic, sad verse. The wicked here, David says their entire lifestyle is evil. Everything that they do is wicked. It's a, it's a wasted life. They're so consumed with evil in this verse that I just read. He, David says, God's word says that they go to bed at night before they close their eyes to go to sleep. They're already devising in their thoughts, in their plans, evil and how to commit it on the very next day. Now, I want you to note the following verses and look at this, our great God, the great God that, that this, the wicked reject and that they do not fear. These are great verses, loved one. He says, your mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, plural. Talking about how, how far it goes up. The, the mercy of God. Listen, that's God's unfailing love. And all of God's mercies, loved one, they're filled with love. God's mercy is more than available. It is so easily found, so easily found. The Bible teaches us in Ephesians 2.18 and Ephesians 3.12, it says, for through Jesus we have access by one spirit to the Father, and in whom also we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Man, listen, boldness, confidence because of Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible teaches us from the book of Hebrews, the fourth chapter, the 16th verse, it says, let us therefore come boldly with the highest form of confidence, through, meaning through the blood of Jesus Christ. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace and listen to what we can obtain. It says we may obtain mercy we, and find grace, God's unmerited, undeserved favor and help in time of need. You know what? No matter what we're facing tonight, no matter what we're facing tomorrow, we are not to fret 
Don't fret, Christian. Listen, don't fall apart. We are the only people on earth, earth that has, uh, we have access to the throne room of God. We can go there. Listen, it says we have grace, the unmerited favor of God. We have grace to help in time of need. We don't have to fret. Everything that we need in this life is in the throne room. Before it's manifested on earth, it is manifested first in heaven. It's right there right now. You know, you, you need help in time of need. All you have to do, you don't have to fret, but here's what you have to do. You have to come boldly to the throne of grace. You have to come to the one, the great God, our Father, who in, instead of punishing you and me for our sins, punished his own son on the cross. I believe with all my heart, if God did all that and he did, then he'll certainly help us in time of need. Now look at the next part. It says, and the, and the reason I know that God will help us is this next part. Watch this. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. You know, when you think about God's faithfulness, do you know that God our Father is the only person ever to have spoken promises to all of mankind? Man, listen, our God, he is so faithful. His faithfulness, it says, reaches to the clouds. What does that mean? That means there's absolutely no limit to the faithfulness of God. That's why we don't have to fret tonight. We don't have to worry about a thing. Listen to how faithful God is. 1 Thessalonians 5, 24. He who calls you is faithful who will also do it. What, is it. what does that mean? Well, it means that he called you, and since he called you and saved you, he's going to complete you. He's going to, in other words, he's going to keep you till the very end. You don't have anything to worry about. He's going to complete the work he started in you. When it comes to the devil, listen to this scripture, 2 Thessalonians 3.3. 3. It says, but the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. God is guarding you right now, right this very minute from the most wicked fallen entity in the entire universe. Why? Because God is faithful. The Bible teaches us when we are faithless, God remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. Oh, listen, how about when we sin and we don't want to sin? But it says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, listen carefully, our Father, he is faithful and he is just to forgive us. That word forgive, remember, means to put it away, take it away, carry it away, to cancel our debt. It says to forgive us of our sins, sins are plural, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He says God is faithful. What a glorious, wonderful promise. Loved one, listen, how many times... How many times has God ever been unfaithful to you? Never. God can't be unfaithful. Never. He can't deny himself. The Bible teaches us in Lamentations 3.22, it says, through the Lord's mercies or his great love, we're not consumed. And here's the reason. Because his compassions fail not. Compassions, plural. In other words, his compassion for us is unlimited. It says, his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Now look at verse 6 with me. It says, your righteousness is like the mountains are literally like the mountains of God. You ever try to move a mountain? Man, he says, it's like the mountains. He says, your judgments are great, deep. In other words, unsearchable. Oh, Lord, you preserve man and beast. So God, he takes care of everyone, doesn't he? He sends rain upon the just, the unjust alike. Everything that God does is perfect. His justice is always perfect. He says, how precious is your loving kindness, O God. Yes, it is, Lord. Therefore, watch this now. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. As you've heard me say so many times, 
under the shadow of Almighty God is the safest place to be. The safest place on earth is under the shadow of God. And you know what? I would tell David, if I could see him right now, I'd say, David, and that's what Calvary Chapel is doing. We tonight, and we have been, and will continue to abide under the shadow of Almighty God. We're, we're hiding ourselves, if you will, as it says in Psalm 90, under the, uh, under, in the secret place. Man, I am so thankful. That's why we don't have to fret. The Bible teaches us again, as you've heard me say, that he will deliver us, or surely he will deliver us from the perilous pestilence. He's guarding us right now. I believe that verse. I'm praying that verse over you, over me, over my family, over this church. Listen, with long life, he will satisfy us. He'll not let any plague come nigh our dwelling. We're going to hold on to the promises of God. Why? He is faithful. He says, but they are abundantly satisfied, meaning they that understand the love of God, know the love of God, the mercy of God, the goodness of God. He says they are abundantly satisfied with what? With the fullness of your house. Boy, and I'll tell you, God's house is full, isn't it? And, and listen to what, the, I love this verse. And you give them drink from the river of your pleasures, plural, God has a river, it's called the river of his pleasure. And he dispenses that. He said, you come and drink. You come and partake of it right now. Listen, did you know Jerusalem, you know, like all the ancient cities were built around rivers, Jerusalem wasn't built around a river at all. What, so what is God saying here? He's saying to David and Israel, but he's saying to us as well. He's saying, you know what? I'm your river. I'm, the, I'm your river. I'm your river of pleasure. You can drink from me. You remember what Jesus told the woman at the well in John 14, I mean 413? Jesus said, oh, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Verse 9. For with you, David says, is the fountain of life. And in your light, we see light. The fountain of life. The Bible says about Jesus, in him was life. Meaning he is the source of all life. The Bible tells us, what did Jesus say in John 14, 6? He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. He says, in your light, we see light. Jesus said in John 8, 12, remember, he said, I am the light of the world. He that follows after me shall never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Man, the Bible teaches us in 1 John 1, 7, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have koinonia, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Christ, of course, cleanses us from all of our sin. I'm so thankful tonight that we have been called out of darkness into his glorious light, his marvelous light. Now, with all of those glorious truths that we just have gone over that have flooded into our heart, this is a great psalm, Psalm 37. Man, I pray after we finish up tonight, go back over Psalm 37. It is a glorious, perfect psalm for what we're facing right now. Remember again what the, what, how I started out the service or the wicked one. He wants you to fret, man. He wants you to be in despair, but he wants your fears and your despair and, and your worry to be multiplied and to be escalated, if you will. Again, he wants every mom and every dad stressed out about, do I put my kid in school or do I have him remote learning? I, we understand all of those things, but what does God say? God says, the devil, he may want you to fret, but God says, I don't want you to fret at all. Look what it says right there. It says, do not fret. Three times it's going to be used in Psalm 37. It's going to be in verse here and then verse 3, 17. I'm sorry, 1, 7, and 8. Now, it says, do not fret. You know, we live in a time right now when we consider safety, man, as a, a, as a premium. You know, the last time that I taught through the Psalms, 
And, this, and uh, believe it or not, the last time I taught Psalm 37 was uh, during 9-11. And the whole world, in, a, in, a, in one day, the entire world changed. But God didn't change. And here we are, and I'm in Psalm 37 again, and you know what? The whole world, I mean the entire world, has changed again because of the COVID virus, this pandemic that we're facing. But God has not changed. God will never change because he can't change. So here we are in the midst of all this social distancing and sanitizing our hands and, and all the things that we're doing, wearing the mask and so forth. Loved one, I want you to listen to me. As we wait on a vaccine or whatever the government is doing, God hasn't changed. God's word didn't change during 9-11. God's word didn't change when the coronavirus swept the world. Amen. Therefore, because of that, it says, do not fret because of evildoers or evil circumstances or anything. Do not fret because of evildoers. Don't be envious of workers of iniquity. How could a believer be envious of, a, of a, uh, someone who's lost? Man, we are co-heirs with Christ. No, we should never be envious at all. But that word, excuse me, that word fret, in the Hebrew, it means, it means literally to be incensed or to burn, uh, to be grieved, or literally I'm all worked up. Uh, we get our English word from the, from the word, the Hebrew word fret, we get the word eat. And by the uh, 15th century, that word was now changed to where instead of eating, it was to be gnawed at or to, to worry. In other words, to eat a person up or to wear a person down by this fretting and gnawing and vexing and worrying. God tells us don't let evil people, evil circumstances, whatever it is, don't let it eat you up. Don't let it wear you down. And he says, tells us why. For evil people, evil circumstances, they shall soon be cut down like the grass. Wither is a green herb. In other words, life is short, loved one. Fretting never needs to be the lifestyle of the believer. We don't need to fret, but we do need to trust. Look what it says in verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Loved one, God is always faithful. So God says, don't fret, man. He says, trust in me. The Bible says in Psalm 1830, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He's a shield to all who trust in him. Proverbs 29, 25, the fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. The Bible teaches us in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not upon your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all of your ways, and he shall direct your paths. So don't fret, God says, just trust me. He says, dwell in the land, and here it comes, and feed on his faithfulness. So as we live in this nation, and as we live here, and as we dwell here, he says, listen, don't fret about anything. He says, but feed yourselves. Feed yourself what? Well, God's faithfulness. We have to stop stuffing our heart and our minds with all that the COVID virus is doing, loved one. We need to just trust the Lord. We don't need to fret about anything, but we do need to delight. Look at verse 4. It says, delight yourself also in the Lord, and look what he will do. He will do. He shall give you the desires of your heart. So to to. To delight in the Lord, I'm having trouble speaking tonight. To delight in the Lord, you have to trust the Lord. And only God, no one else, only, did you know that only God can give you the desires of your heart? And you know why? Because only God knows your heart. He knows everything about us. He loves us, loved one. It says, he says, if we'll do those things, if we'll delight or make merry, have joy in the Lord, delight in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. You know, I started thinking about that. I mean, he's already, Ephesians 1, 3, he has already given unto us every spiritual blessing in Christ. 
I would think really that that should be enough, amen? So God says, don't fret, but commit. Look at the next one, verse 5. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him. And if you don't, you can't, if, you, if you're going to commit, you have to trust, okay? He says, and God will bring it to pass. The word commit in Hebrew literally just means to roll it off of you and roll it on to the Lord. You know, meaning every burden that you may have. You just let God have it. You know, commit your family to the Lord. All of your fears, all of your cares, all of your anxieties. First Peter 5, 7, you know, uh, casting all of your care, all of your anxieties, whatever's tearing you apart, whatever you're fretting about, casting all of your care upon the Lord for he cares for you I like one translation of that where it says dislodge the burden from your shoulders and lay it on God what a great word whatever is gnawing at you right now whatever is trying to eat you alive whatever you are fretting about don't worry it don't worry at all listen roll it off of you Get it off of you right now. Give it unto God. He loves you. He cares for you. And it says when you do that, he will bring it to pass. You won't bring it to pass. It says that God will bring it to pass at the right time, the perfect time in your life and in your walk. And it says, and he, will, he shall surely, he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noon day. So we're not to, we're not to, to fret, we're to commit, and we're also to do something else. Verse 7, we're to rest. It says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. I love that. Rest in the Lord. You know, if you want, if you're fretting right now, if you're, you're just worrying or whatever is going on in your life. Yeah, listen, don't let the devil steal that promise. It says rest in the Lord. That is a, if you want to rest, that is a supernatural rest when you rest in the Lord. You can rest in his love. You can rest in his mercy. You can rest in his goodness. You can rest in his power. Our God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that is working in our lives right this very minute, loved one. That rest is needed. Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, come unto me all who labor heavy laden. I will give you rest. What a promise. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. I'm gentle, lowly in heart. If you'll do that, Jesus said, you will find rest for your souls. But you have to take his yoke. That's a command. You have to take it upon yourself. You have to learn from him. So do not fret, loved one. It says for us to rest and to wait on God to act. Now listen, we have to wait for God a certain way. Did you see what David said? He said, wait patiently on the Lord. So don't fret. Just be calm. Slow down. Listen, waiting is always for the believer the posture of faith. So never be patient, love. And the worst thing that we can do is get ahead of God. He has you, whatever you're praying about, especially as we're in, mom, dad, as we're entering into this school year, don't fret. Just pray. God will tell you exactly what you need to do, okay? God promises, loved one, they, I promise you, they are worth waiting on. Not only that, God is worth waiting on. You see, because God never lies. The Bible says in Psalm 27, 14, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He'll strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So we wait patiently on the Lord. We're not going to fret and we do something else. It says cease, verse 8. It says cease from anger, forsake wrath. Now here's this word again. Do not be eaten up. Don't let anything gnaw upon you. It says do not fret. Why? It only causes harm. Isn't that amazing? That's the word of God. Fretting only causes harm. Wouldn't that be wonderful if we all knew that? 
You know, if, if, if the whole world believed that, oh, listen, we live right now, the word cease from anger. We live in a nation that is angry, that is over the top, angry about everything. When they don't get their way, they loot and they burn and they destroy, they kill. It's a horrible time that we're living in. There's a lot of wonderful people, but there's a lot of evil people, loved one, as well. And you know what? Anger only causes harm. And we don't have to fret about what's happening in our country. And we don't have to fret about the coronavirus. And the reason, we'll drop down to verse 18. For the Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. Say that word with me at home right now, forever. Our inheritance is forever and ever and ever. God knows the days of our life. We don't have to worry about it. We don't need to be fretting. We just need to live, loved one. No, drop down to verse 23. It says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. What if every believer... Well, let's just, what if just we, Calvary Chapel, what if we truly believed that verse? And I know that we believe it, but you know what I'm saying. If we believed it, though, every morning when we left our house uh, for work or to school or to buy groceries or whatever it is, if we truly believe that when we left our house that this scripture, if we did, we would not be fretting about our day. Let me read it again. The steps of a good man are established. They're ordered by the Lord. He delights in his way. Now, Listen, verse 24 tells us how secure we are. Look at it. We don't have to fret. He says, when we leave our homes, even though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. Why? For the Lord upholds him with his hand. As you've heard me say so many times from the book of Hebrews, God will never, no, never, no, never relax his hold upon you. He has you. Matter of fact, if you drop down to verse 31 of Psalm 37, it says, the law of God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide or none of his steps will ever slip. Look at verse 25. I've been young, David says, and oh, and now I'm old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. It doesn't say that we won't go through difficult times or have warfare. It says, I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. You know what God wants? God wants what David just said, his testimony, to be your testimony. We don't have to be afraid or fret when we're young, and we don't have to be afraid uh, or fret when we're old. God is going to take care of us. Now, let's close tonight with just a few verses from this great psalm. And, and look at our future. We don't have to fret about anything. Look at verse 37. He says, mark the blameless man. Now, that doesn't mean sinless, the sinless man. It means a sincere person, okay? Mark the sincere man and observe the upright. For the future of that man is peace, thank God. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The future of the wicked, well, they'll be cut off. Man, if you want peace, trust in the Lord tonight. Don't fret about anything. Look at verse 39. But the salvation of the, right is, of the righteous is from the Lord. And I love this. He is their strength when? In the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them. The Lord will deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them. Why? Because they trust in him. We don't need to fret about anything. Every day we need to stand strong. We need to know that God is the lifter of our head. Jesus died for us. He loves us. He'll never leave us, nor will he ever, ever forsake us, loved one. Listen, we don't have to fret. And the reason, God is our strength in the time of trouble, the specific time of trouble. Whenever it is, today, tomorrow, he is there for us. The Bible tells us this. It, the psalmist said, this I know, God is for me. Let's pray. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name, these wonderful truths tonight that we've learned. I pray, Lord, that everyone who hears this sermon tonight, that they will review Psalm 37, and that, Lord, that, that they won't fret about anything. If they are fretting, Lord, I pray right now it's displaced. And in its place, you put your peace and your joy and your assurance, Lord. 
bless your sheep. We love you. We give you praise tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. And we all say amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. I love you dearly. I'll see you Sunday.